My friends, the day has finally come for us to get real deal power out here at Everstoke. We're building a 91 acre paradise for mountain bikers, but it's all been off grid and it has all been a struggle. We use solar power to get everything going out here. And during winter days like these, the sun is only up for a couple hours and our energy demand is off the charts because everything is frozen out here and we need heat and power to unfreeze it. When was the last time you had to wait for the water in the toilet to unfreeze before you could go to the bathroom? For me, it was today. Before Everstoke, I had gone my whole life kinda sorta knowing how power systems, water systems, and septic systems kinda sorta worked. You know, you plug the PlayStation in, it turns on. You flush the goldfish down the toilet, it goes away. But when you're building everything off-grid from scratch, it forces you to really learn the ins and outs of everything. It's a giant puzzle. It's so frustrating, but so rewarding, and endlessly expensive. And this monster right here has been the biggest and the baddest of them all. So before we hop into the new power station, I wanna talk about the old power stations, how we got here, and all the various terms for watts and energy and watt hours and all that stuff to make it easy for you to understand why we need it and why we're doing this and why the big boy is awesome. So the various portable power stations we've been using over the past two and a half years have all kind of sort of been the same in terms of horsepower and fuel tank. They can all put out 2000 watts of power. That's kind of like the horsepower, how many things you could have plugged in at once. And they've all had about the same amount of energy in the tank. The batteries have a capacity of 2000 watt hours, which means if you're going at 2000 watts, you can only run for one hour. And in the summer, we can charge these batteries up very easily with our solar panels. But in the winter, when there's not as much sun, we use the dirty, smelly, loud gas generator. So we've got 2000 watts of energy that we can throw at any problem as long as our batteries are charged up. And in this modern era, 2000 watts is actually pretty good for most things. You could be running a really big TV, a really good surround sound system. You could have a bunch of lights on. You could be powering your Wi-Fi router, your cable modem, charging up your phone, charging up your laptop, and you probably wouldn't even use 1000 watts. But once you get into heating or cooling, power consumption starts to go off the charts. If you've ever been at home and you tried to microwave a bag of popcorn while you were heating something up in an electric kettle and you had all that stuff on the same circuit, most likely you tripped the 15 amp breaker and you had to go in the garage and look through all the breakers and turn it back on. And that 15 amp breaker is right around 2000 watts, which is all the power we can handle here at Everstoke. So Everstoke is getting a huge power upgrade and Element, the fine sponsor of today's video, is getting a huge flavor upgrade. Element is going hot this winter with their brand new chocolate medley box that includes 10 packs each of chocolate mint, chocolate chai, and chocolate raspberry. I am not much of a coffee guy, I'm not much of a hot drink guy, but I am an Element guy. I believe in the Element mission to restore health through hydration. Winter hydration is important too. We get less thirsty when it's cold out or if we're at a higher elevation, but that doesn't mean you're actually hydrated. Element is zero sugar, stevia sweetened, fantastic tasting and extra salty to make sure you beat the headaches, the cramps and the general tiredness that comes along with the lack of electrolytes. The Element thesis is simple, out with sugar and in with salt. They believe that most people, especially active people who get out there and sweat a lot, need more salt in their diet, not less, to perform their best. Regular element is pretty simple. You dump a pack into a water bottle when you're working out, going out for a bike ride or digging some trenches. But there is a whole new world of recipes and creativity with the new chocolate packs. Put it in your coffee, mix it with some milk, bake it into a cake. The possibilities are endless. Give the new chocolate medley a try and remember, element always has a no questions asked return policy. I think you're gonna like it, but if for some reason you don't, 
Don't worry, you're not taking any risk. If you order through my link today, drinkelement.com slash BKXC, you'll get what you ordered, but you'll also get eight individual packs, a nice sample pack to figure out what other flavors of Element you really like so you can make another order. That deal's only available through my link, D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash B-K-X-C. And I don't want to go too deep into the woods and all this, but I think it's really interesting and worth knowing American power systems are mostly 120 volts, our receptacles, our outlets, our plugs, but the rest of the world is mostly 240 volts. That's because America electrified a lot quicker than the rest of the world. We were obsessed with light bulbs and basically 120 volt power was perfect for light bulbs. And then a couple years later we realized, oh man, there's a lot of bigger stuff that would run a lot better on 240 volts. We were already too far gone. The rest of the world did it right and we're still back in the stone age. So as it stands right now, as these are some of the shortest days of the year, we don't get enough sun on our solar panels and we are using power like crazy. We're getting water out of the well, that's power. We're pumping the septic out of the tank into the leach field, that's power. We are keeping the water pipes from freezing, that is a lot of power. That 2000 watt hours of energy stored inside of our batteries barely makes it through a day out here. So what we have needed all along is more power and I finally saved up my nickels and dimes for a long time and got what I think is the best thing going right now. I've studied all these different power systems and the reviews on this one are fantastic. It's the EG4 ESS. So there's two big components here. This is the EG4 18K PV. It's a charge controller, it's an inverter. It pulls in energy, it spits out energy, and then the EG4 Power Pro battery, which stores the energy. So the small portable power stations we use can put out about 2000 watts of energy. This thing can do 12,000 watts of energy continuous. And as I've said, there's 2000 watt hours of storage in those smaller portable power stations, 14,000 watt hours of storage in this one. So we've got six times the output, six times the horsepower, and we've got seven times the storage, seven times the fuel tank. And I have just spent the past week getting this thing up and running. I finally have everything pretty much rough drafted in before I can get an electrician to look at everything, double check my work. Oh, it has been a journey. This thing came in a massive package from FedEx Freight and luckily everything was clean, undamaged, and ready to go. And even more luckily, my dad and I just happen to have a skid steer on the property because we're working on a different project that I'll share with you eventually. And man, so much easier to load all this heavy stuff into the skid steer and move it into place. We still had to do a little bit of pushing and shoving to get this monstrosity into its final resting place, but it would have been impossible without the skid steer. And very luckily, I had just watched another guy's video where he did all this by himself, and he had put a couple of big hooks in his wall to help use some ratchet straps. So I totally stole that idea, I bought some nice big hooks and put them up on the wall. Thankfully, my dad has all the equipment and all the know-how on moving really, really heavy stuff from his days in the Union Iron Workers. So we slowly ratcheted this 300 plus pound battery beast into position and it kind of had to be exact because we want it sitting flush on the ground, but we also have this wall plate that it has to kind of lock into to keep it from tipping forward. And we ended up doing this process three or four times because every time I realized I missed something from the instruction books. The instructions were pretty dang good, but I just kept messing up things and okay, take it back off. Okay, put it back on. Okay, take it back off. So these pieces are very modular. You can set them up with different batteries, different inverters, any way you wanna set it up, you could pretty much do it. But buying this as an all-in-one kit was really nice because the battery actually came with this floppy metal template, this X that helped us get the battery in position relative to the inverter and just made everything install nice and clean. And we didn't end up using the ratchet straps for the inverter, even though that thing is like 150 pounds. 
we just wanted to get it done with and then luckily we had enough muscle to get there. One of the best bonuses about buying this as an all-in-one kit is the middle box, this chase that you can put all your wires in. You can have a nice cluttered mess of wires, but it looks really nice on the outside. And the top is all drilled out, all the knockouts are gone to make it compatible with the inverter. So now we've got all the heavy lifting out of the way. It's just gonna be easy street from here. Connect up a couple wires, right? Wrong. So the first step is to take off the plastic panels on the side of the batteries. And unfortunately, these very soft screws were very over torqued from the factory. I was able to pop them off with a dainty little screwdriver, but man, the last one gave me fits. I tried to drill it out, I tried to back it out, and eventually I just ended up ripping the plastic panel off. Hopefully Signature Solar, the people I bought this system from, will send me some new screws and send me a new plastic panel to replace it. Ah, oh, such a bad start for a $10,000 system. So now it's just one puzzle after the next, all very fulfilling, but all a little complicated and mystifying. The EG4 manual that they sent me was immediately outdated. So if you're getting this system, throw that manual away and print out the one that's online. It's way more updated and fills in a lot of blanks that are missing from the original manual. The setup video that Signature Solar uploaded to their YouTube channel was very helpful all along the way to make Make sure I had things lined up right. So I wanted to get my hardware set up as far along as I could into like a rough draft position before I started in with the software of the ESS system. So that meant actually setting up a full on breaker box, a load center, a breaker panel, a service panel, whatever you call it, one of these things. I learned so much along the way of researching what kind of panel I need, what size breakers I need, what size wires I need. All of these things all add up to making your system run correctly. It is so much easier to work on and understand your electrical system when you've got one thing coming in and one circuit going out compared to trying to learn on grandma's basement that has 50 different circuits and wires spliced in and it's a total mess from the 70s. This is like state of the art, modern, so much easier to work on and understand doing one circuit at a time. And holy moly, driving a ground rod. That is no fun at all. I watched a bunch of videos. I saw all these people, oh, you just pour a little water in the hole and you push it down. And then you pour a little more water in the hole and it pushes down. It's so easy. Oh, give me a break. I got the ground rod driver bit for my hammer drill and I still could not get this thing into the earth. I switched into a different spot. I made a lot more progress just using the post hammer thingamabob. Oh man, eventually I had to get out the sledgehammer and just go a millimeter at a time with every single hit. This warmed me up pretty quickly. Oh, not too far. <laughs> Okay, what a battle. I also wired up my first outlet. Shout out to all the electricians out there that have to pull wire through a cable. This was like a six inch cable and I was still struggling. It's gonna be a lot of struggle as I get all these other circuits going. So now it's time to wake the beast up, flip all the breakers into the on position and see if anything starts smoking. And my little pea brain was the only thing that was blowing smoke as I had to troubleshoot and figure out step after step after step, going through the manual, double checking the forums, going back and forth and figuring out what the heck I did wrong all along the way. One of the biggest little mind benders was the dip switches on the battery. When you're setting it up, you have to have them all in the up position. And I accidentally kept them all in the up position when I was trying to set it up. I realized you have to have the first one in the down position to signify that this is ID number one battery. If you have more batteries, you have to do a bunch of other stuff. But I just have one battery, one dip switch down on the front, and everything finally came to life. It was so satisfying to plug that lamp in and get the red glow of success. I have to say it is mind blowing that we're almost in 2024 
and companies are still shipping products with just terrible interfaces, terrible touch screens, horrible software menus. There's got to be a better way. But I guess that's why you save a couple bucks on the DIY setup versus the top tier Tesla type stuff. So the rough draft system is alive and well. I'm actually able to monitor things from my house, which is fantastic. The software on that is also garbage. Every time I open the app, I have to kill the app first before I can open it again to actually get it to work. So even though I am cheering with victory that I've built a fantastic foundation for the whole Everstoke electrical system, solar power is still at a premium. So the first thing on my list is to get my smart generator switch going so I can monitor things from home or even set up an automation where if the big battery drops below 10%, turn on the generator, fire it up, and fill up the batteries as much as you can. I've got a lot of smart home automation type stuff for Everstoke that I'd like to pull off, a smart homestead, if you will, and I'll probably share that with you in a video coming soon. But until then, I am celebrating. We've got tons of power to keep the pipes unfrozen, to keep the well running, to flush the toilets, to get everything up and running, eventually even charge up some electric cars during the summer when we're gonna be throwing off electricity more than we could ever use. Let me know what I missed in the comments. I've been doing a pretty good job of responding to almost every single comment over the past couple months. So if you got a question, let me have it. Do me a favor. Go ride something new, go build something new, go learn something new, and maybe I'll see you at Everstoke.